Okay, so good morning and welcome everyone to your writing type two, or sorry, writing task two, type slash, or also known as the open ended essay writing major. So we are going to present to you all the information you need to know in preparation for your exam, particularly in the writing subtest. So first, let us set our objectives right. What are the goals of today's lecture? Number one, we want to make ourselves familiar with the details of the IELTS writing task two subtest. Okay. In particular, the type of question, instruction, or task description that we need to make ourselves really familiar about is your type slash. Another objective that we need to fulfill is we want to be familiar with the type slash instruction. And basically, once we do, we need to know how to organize a response in a very proper manner. Because I've mentioned on my previous lectures, writing major videos, that each of the different types of instructions will require candidates like you to provide a different type of response. So we have already finished dealing with your agree disagree, which you probably know that the presentation of the ideas require an opinion type of essay prompt. And for discuss both views, you have to balance the pros and cons. But for type slash instruction, this is a different game that you have to make yourself familiar about. And that is my job to let you know what this instruction is and how you can get away with this properly. And last part of our objective is to know how to approach each part of the essay and how to um, practice becoming a better writer. So in terms of the essay writing, there will be parts of the writing prompt that you have to make yourself aware of. And then the parts must be in congruence with the totality of what you will be submitting after the test. So those are the objectives that we need to, to fulfill before the end of the lecture. And then what is writing task two anyway? Okay, so writing task two, I have done this lecture for four times already, but I will not be stopping in telling you that this is the most difficult task in the whole IELTS subtest. Well, it actually has an explanation why, all right? So when it comes to your examination, you have four subtests. You have the listening, listening, you have the reading, you have the writing practically, and then the speaking exam. Now for speaking examination, we'll be covering that one next week. All right, so next week our focus will be speaking, okay? So we will be disregarding the speaking subtest for now because your written exam, namely your listening, reading, writing, we call it the written test, depending on whether you will be taking the pen and paper or the computer delivered exam, you are going to basically provide an output. So for listening, you have to answer questions. For reading, you have to answer questions. So basically, when it comes to generalization, listening and reading are practically easier as compared to writing. Why? Because your writing subtest would require you as a candidate to not only submit one, but two written outputs in a matter of 60 minutes. So that is one of the reasons why we distinguish writing subtests as a difficult one. Well, perhaps you see that your reading and listening will happen first before your writing. So there's a great chance that you will be spending energy for your listening test. You have already spent quite an amount of energy for reading. And in writing, you're not just going to analyze or compare words or just to weight words, how they are going to be presented to you. Rather, you will be the one to provide an output. You're going to be uh, writing something. So in task one, 
Okay, so writing task one is not our problem today, okay, because this is writing task two. So as I've mentioned in writing, you will be submitting two written outputs after an hour. So your writing task one depends on your module. For GT, you have letter writing. For academic, you have your um, line graph, bar graph, table, pie chart, maps, cycles, diagrams, and so on. And then for writing task two, you have the big five, all right? You have the big five, task two. We have the big five, okay? So you have your agree, disagree. To what extent do you agree, disagree? Discuss both views. Open-ended, which is this day's lecture. And then lastly, your do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So each of those five questions that I've mentioned now, they require different approach. And you will understand that once you finished watching the replay of both my lectures for last week and the week prior to that. But of course, for new enrollees, especially um, the two new enrollees that I have right now, don't worry if today is your first experience, you don't have to worry much about it. You will be able to uh, find some insights regarding all of them because we will be going back to those topics eventually. So writing task two, now what makes it even difficult is that your writing task one only requires you to provide an output of 150 words, okay? Whereas your writing task two will require you to provide an output of 250 words. That is primarily the reason, okay? This is primarily the reason why in the IELTS, I recommend that you spend 40 minutes for task two and you spend 20 minutes for task one. Okay, again, we will be spending only 20 minutes for task one, and we will be spending 40 minutes for task two. The reason for that is practically writing task two would require you more time since it is much longer as compared to writing task one. So I hope that I made myself clear about the difference between the imbalance of the 60 minutes expenditure for your writing subtest in the IELTS so 20 minutes for task one, because task one is much shorter. Not only that, task one is much easier. I mean, look at GT. All you need to do is to attend one lecture, letter writing, and that's it. You have an idea about what to do on the test. And for task two, you will be spending 40 minutes because you have to do brainstorming. You have to analyze, compare, contrast ideas for and again. So it's practically much more difficult for task two because you have to provide an essay and not only some bunch of words that you have thought of, it should be strategically and um, it, it should be strategically thought of, okay? So the ideas that you will be presenting will be carefully reasoned out. So that's what makes it difficult. So again, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything that come, come to Niner Kabanatuan and once you do so, you will be able to pass the exam. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? I'm going to do my part in telling you all the things you need to know. You're going to do your part by doing all the things you need to do. So, and for you to complete the task, okay? And for you to practically get a high band score, a decent amount of score here, my suggestion is that you attend all those five lectures for writing. Again, I've, I'm going to repeat myself here. Agree, disagree, to what extent, discuss both views, open-ended, do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Plus your writing task to skills enhancement and your content writing. So meron pa tayong common mistakes in writing task two and we still have your, um, what's that? Common mistakes in IELTS featuring writing. So we have a total of nine lectures just for writing task two. We're not counting task one yet, all right? So that's how many lectures you have to attend to so that you can have an overall idea. You can grasp what technically a writing task is about and how you can, as a candidate, how you can be able to provide a substantial amount of inputs to your presentation. So in this task, you will be given an opinion, okay? You'll be given an opinion, an argument or a problem, and you have to provide an essay in response. 
okay? So this part right here, I'm going to put a highlight mark, okay? Now you are going to require yourself to discuss an issue, okay? That's a very similar task. Discuss an issue, okay? Question or opinion of general interest. You also have to give your own point of view of the matter. You may also have to consider an opinion in relation to evidence, which is important. Uh, you need to also weigh up the pros and cons of an argument before presenting your own views of the matter and discuss various aspects of a problem and then outline your ideas for solving it. Now, let me put another highlight here because this latter part right here is what we're going to use more often in a to what extent, sorry, in an open-ended type of essay writing. So we need to discuss various aspects of a problem. So we have to determine what ideas do we have to be able to solve such problems. And um, that's what we're going to do for your writing task to open-ended. Those are the things that you need to make yourself familiar about so that you don't be, you will not be surprised or caught off guard what this is about, okay? Now, the topics do not essentially require you to have a specialist knowledge, but at the bare minimum, you have to be able to present ideas on general issues. So, when it comes to writing, task two, there will always be topics that you need to present ideas about. There will be questions that you have to answer. And those questions, those ideas, come from general issues, all right? They come from general issues. So what are the typical general issues that we have? Okay, so we have, again, vaccine because of the pandemic. It could be a question, all right? So we have questions about education regarding distance learning because, again, we are in the pandemic. So what's the trend um, happening around us would be the questions that could get asked in the test, all right? What else? Children, okay? The obesity problem of children. What else? The family structures, they are changing, all right? Now, that before, families used to be complete, but now it is very common to encounter broken families and things like that. What else? Families migration, okay? Or families, uh, you will see later, I have a question about neighborhood. And uh, it's actually difficult to outline ideas about this topic. So you see, whatever question you will get asked on the test, there is primarily one tip out there, and that is to read, okay? Read, read newspapers. Newspapers, through reading newspapers, you would get hold of ideas regarding general issues. That's it, that's, that's simple as that. So I need to know what's happening around me. I need to know uh, basically what are the topics of general public interest so that I can understand what type of questions might get asked on the test. And you know what? You guys are very lucky because at 9.09er, we gave you uh, an orange book, okay? That orange book contains about 155 questions of our past students. So the idea is that those questions are basically being repeated, all right? So the questions you will see there at the back of your orange book, I'm not mistaken if it's 55 or 56, you know, just have to flip it out. Um, those questions are the ones that you will encounter on the test, all right? It is, uh, there's a testimony because my students tell me what questions they get asked during the test. And uh, we're surprised that every year, the same questions are being asked. So uh, it seems like you're already ahead, okay, of most candidates because you already know what to expect, all right? So you wouldn't get caught off guard. You wouldn't be surprised by what type of test are you going to expect because you're already prepared. So. Now, you will read the questions on the orange book, all right? You will read questions um, to know about the general issues in the newspaper. Sir, I don't want to read newspapers because, you know, newspapers, they suck. 
you know, it costs 20 pesos. True. 24 pesos currently. It costs 24 pesos. And the problem is that it is only good for today. Like you can't use the same idea of today's newspaper for tomorrow because news tomorrow will be quite different from what it is now. So what do you think is a great suggestion as a replacement for newspapers? They're online portals. So those newspapers have their very own online websites. So I want you to check them out. So you have different choices. You have Philippine Star, you have inquire.net, you have Manila Bulletin, you have international ones like um, Huffington Post. All right, so Huffington Post. Uh, you have the, the foreign correspondent. So you have tons of newspapers to choose from. I just don't want you reading newspapers like Bulgar or Tik Tik, right? So why do we have to read English newspapers? It's because they're practically in English. Whatever method the editor used for that presentation of the ideas with arguments, that's exactly what we're supposed to do as writers. So if we can get the neutrality, the ability of the writer to use the correct words, right place at the right time for our presentation of ideas, that will be great, okay? That's my uh, suggestion here. So that uh, if you want to get ideas about what to write, okay? That's the most important thing. Many people don't have an idea about what to write. So for you to do so, you need to read newspapers. Make reading a habit. At least in a week, you probably need to accomplish three to four opinion sections of each of the newspapers I've mentioned here. So the prompt is usually a background statement introducing the topic followed by instruction to the candidate. Again, this is important that the instruction then tells us exactly how we should approach the topic. And it is very important that we carefully analyze exactly what we are expected to write about. So once again, each of the different types of instructions will yield different types of responses. So it is imperative for candidates like you to understand exactly what the instruction is and how can you as a candidate write an essay that matches the examiner standards for that type of question that you identify. So. That is the overview of your writing. We still have more overview. Uh, we still have the continuation of the overview. So you will be assessed according to four areas. Okay, the first one will be task accomplishment. So task accomplishment, what, do, what does it do? Okay, what does task accomplishment do? You'll be assessed according to the complete, completeness of your task. And for you to complete your task, you need to provide 250 words. If you will write less than 250 words, your automatic PA score or TR, task response, basically the same principle, will get a band score of five, all right? And even if you will get an eight, okay, an eight for grammar, even if you get an eight for coherence, cohesion, and content, even if you get an eight for vocabulary and lexical resource, if you add them together, all right, five plus eight plus eight plus eight, that will be equivalent to 29. Yes, divided by four, it is still equivalent to seven. But because your writing task is categorized as under length, under length task will have a penalty of one. So we will subtract one from this seven right here. So that makes it really complicated. You know, you already got eight for grammar, you already got eight here, and you already got eight here. But because your writing task is under length, let's say you only wrote 240, uh, sorry, two, yeah, 244, 238. So anything between um, 200, 
to 249, the equivalent PA score will be 5. And if we're going to write um, 199 words or less, you will get a band score okay, uh, of 4 and a penalty of 2. That's why it is important that as a candidate, you will be able to submit your writing task completely. Okay, when it comes to completeness of your task, um, not only, all right, not only the, not only the number of words, but the presentation of ideas as well. So completeness, ideas, 250 words or more. Okay, so what I am suggesting is that you provide an essay at between 270 and 320 words. I don't want you to spend more time exceeding 320. Like some students can go on and do 350. It's okay. But the problem with 350, the problem with 320 or more words is that your essay becomes saturated with ideas. That's not the only problem. When it becomes saturated with ideas, um, it will be taking you longer to finish the test. Remember, you only have 40 minutes to finish the test because you still have to do task one. Again, that is correct. You heard me right. You will do writing task two first on the actual exam. And then we will do writing task one last because writing task two is more important than writing task one based on the computation. I'm going to repeat my, uh, myself here, okay? Based on the computation, task one score, you will add it with task two score, but before you add them, you will multiply it first by two, okay? And then that is your uh, score, you will be dividing it by three. Okay, so this is the formula. So you have your task one, and then you will add task two, you will multiply it by two, and then you will divide it by three. So just as an example, uh, you get a task one score of five. That's a failing score, right? Okay. And then we add task two, which is an eight. You multiply eight by two first, which will now give us 16 plus five, that is 21. Now you divide 21 by three, that is still a seven. So the very basic principle is that your writing task score, hahatakin niya yung score mo sa writing task one pataas. That's why we want to exert more effort in task two. We give more importance with task two. We begin writing task two first on the actual exam, okay? So that's basically the principle of task accomplishment, completeness of your task, 250 words, ideas, okay? All right, so that is the idea here. Any question? Mary Rose, Jezriel, Christine, Christian J, Aljanina, Jonalyn, anything? Do you have any questions? All right, so no one's asking me, I would take that as no question. So, so you have your coherence, cohesion and content. So this is the second uh, most important marking because not many people get this correct, okay? Not many people get this correctly. So cohesion, so when say coherence first, coherence refers to the logical arrangement. Arrangement of ideas. So how did you present your task? Did you put them in their proper order? Okay, so basically coherence referred to as the paragraphing. So you have to divide your task, your entire essay into parts. And those parts, we will be using the paragraphing method so that they are separated from one another. But you have to make sure that the ideas are still unified with their cohesion. Cohesion refers to the connection, unification of ideas. So basically, we're going to use connectors. It's so easy. Connectors, or if you want to be much more academic sounding here, we can use discourse markers so that we can transition from one topic onto the next. So 
basic words when it comes to coherence and cohesion, all right? So if I'm going to add uh, on paragraph and sentence level, I can use the words additionally, in addition to that, in addition, moreover, furthermore. So those are the words that I use if I want to add. Okay, if I'm going to add an, a contrast here, all right, let me change my, the color of my um, ink here. So if you're going to show contrast, you can show the, that there's a contrast between sentence and paragraph level by using the words on the other hand. Meanwhile, uh, however, in contrast, On the contrary, in comparison, all right, if I'm showing example, if I need to show examples here, then I can use the following words like this. For example, for instance, or to illustrate. can also use the words namely, like, such as, if you are on the inside of the sentence. So coherence refers to chopping your essay into parts. Cohesion refers to the connection. So even though you are separating the, those ideas into paragraphs, you're still connecting them using your connectors, okay? So if you want to add, here are the words that you can use. If you want to show contrast, here are the words that you can use. And then if you want to give example, I also have the words that you can use, okay? So that is basically your cohesion coherence. But when it comes to content, I'm not going to tell you yet what content is because we have a separate lecture for this, your content writing. So I want you guys to attend your content writing lecture probably two weeks from now. All right, so, so that they can learn more about content and how this plays an important role in your essay writing. Now, um, let's continue. We're done with coherence and cohesion. Again, those task accomplishment, coherence, cohesion, and content, they're very important. But let us not forget that the most common mistake in the IELTS writing is grammar. Why? Because whatever it is that you write in your essay will be an evidence against you. What you submit is going to be permanent in nature. You can't change it anymore. And most of the grammatical mistakes are due to carelessness, all right? So improper use of punctuation, okay? What else? What are, the, what are some of the grammatical issues that I normally encounter among my students? You have your subject verb agreement. Okay, you have your tenses. You have the improper use of modifiers, adjectives and adverbs. You have the improper use of preposition. Okay, prepositions. You have your conjunctions. Even spelling. All right, so, and even your handwriting. There is a part of your answer sheet that says illegible, which means that if your handwriting is not proper, if your handwriting cannot be understood, they will not waste time. Examiners will not waste their time trying to understand or decode whatever it is that you put there, and they will give you a reduction off of your score. All right, so grammar, you have to be careful. Make sure that your sentence structures are accurate, okay? Vocabulary and lexical resource. Um, in here, we want to avoid Repetition, you want to avoid redundancy. So repetition, here's an example of repetition. If your topic is about the society and you use the word people probably around um, eight times in your entire essay, then examiners would say, this person is not very resourceful. This candidate is not very resourceful because this person used the word 
people eight times. So you have to use synonyms of people. You have to use the words persons. Okay, I can use persons or individuals. Or I can use the words um, people again, and then them, and then they, and then persons again. So you have to use various words. Sir, what about if a word doesn't have a synonym? So for example, public school. We don't have synonym for public school. So why don't you describe it instead by saying or writing government subsidized educational institutions. All right, so you can replace public school with government subsidized educational institutions. So what if you're talking about um, products? So what words can I replace products with? So you can replace, perhaps, let's say the important products that we use on a daily basis, we call them commodities. Okay, we call them commodities. Um, we also use them as necessities. Okay, we can also use the words merchandise or items. Let's say food items, those are products, okay? So basically you have to know synonyms of the words. And if you don't know synonyms, my suggestion so that you avoid repetition is that you describe the word, okay? What examiners hate the most if you're going to repeat the words on the same sentence, for example, day by day or side by side? What else? Um, Many, many, more and more, all right? Very, very, all right. Examiners don't like that. So if you're going to repeat a word with the same sentence, then tell yourself you're not doing it right, okay? It's not right if you're repeating the word. Here's the sentence, and on the next sentence, you repeat the word, that's not the right thing to do. So make sure that if you're going to repeat the word, okay, you will be um, making them a bit far from one another. Like sentence one contains the word. Sentence two will not contain the word. Sentence three will contain the word. So for example, all right. For example, here I have sentence one, internet. Sentence two will not contain internet anymore. Blank. And then sentence three, I can now repeat internet so that I can avoid repetition. Sir, what about internet is my topic? So I just only have to use internet? No, you can use um, World Wide Web instead, okay? Or you can use websites, or you can use the words um, connection or things alike, okay? So based on the context that you want to apply, you can also use definitions. Like if I'm going to give um, some definition of the internet specific, I can use the word social media, media platforms, okay? So I can avoid repeating the word over and over again, all right? So that is repetition, but what about redundancy? Redundancy is implying, I'm going to use purple, implying the same idea. So what is implying the same idea? For example, this is my sentence. Uh, internet or the internet is important and essential to the society. Now, what's wrong with this is because basically the word important and essential mean the same thing. You know what? Your sentence can practically function just by the internet is important to the society. It is an essential part of person's daily life. That's it. So you're not repeating important, but you use the word, the, the same meaning of the word, which is essential on the next sentence. It's okay. All right. So don't put the same idea on one sentence. Okay. So that is basically what redundancy is. All right. So if you want to know more about redundancy, uh, the easiest definition for this will be the example of pizza pie. In Italy, 
pizza literally means pie. So when you translate pizza pie, it will now be pie pie. So you don't say pizza pie, you just say pizza, okay? So that's the idea for vocabulary and lexical resource. That, um, th this list, this entire thing, it's what examiners will use to assess your performance, okay? So they have their, what we call band descriptors. They have their own checklists and um, you have to minimize the occurrence of errors and mistakes. So all the things that I've presented here will be the manner in which examiners will be checking your work. So it's imperative that candidates like you will be able to present ideas in a very neat, in a very logical manner, okay? So before I proceed to my next presentation, guys, um, do you have any questions or concerns? Anyone? Okay, none. Let me continue. So three basic parts of a writing task. Okay, so we have the introduction, we have the body, and we have the conclusion. Now, um, basically the body of your essay here, okay, the body of your essay varies depending on the instruction, okay? And depending on the instruction, there will be multiple paragraphs in the body. At bare minimum, two body paragraphs, maximum four body paragraphs. Okay, this four body paragraphs is only applicable for discuss both views. So for those who attended discuss both views, uh, that's really nice of you. But for open-ended, we will be trying to minimize this only three, three paragraphs. So how many paragraphs in the body? Two to three paragraphs. Okay, we're going to minimize the number of paragraphs for the body into two to three. Plus you will have your introductory paragraph, you will have your concluding paragraph. So in total, it's a minimum of four and a maximum of five, all right? Again, depending on the instruction. And open-ended type of instruction varies greatly from one another. So we cannot just categorize that since you are an open-ended type of question, I will be utilizing two paragraphs. By default, no, it's not going to work like that, all right? So there's a difference between type of questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare and contrast the questions that I have for you. We will try to determine what are the reasons why I, okay, why I will use two paragraphs for the body, total of four, and why I'll utilize three paragraphs in the body, total of five. So it's either four paragraphs entirely or five paragraphs entirely, counting the paragraphs for your introduction and conclusion. So that's the basic parts of your writing task today. All right, so again, type slash are also known as the open-ended type. You're presented with a situation or a problem and there will be following tasks or questions to thoroughly discuss the scenario. So what you need to do is to analyze problems and suggest solutions. So if you are a person whom your friends always ask you for advice, then you're halfway through passing this exam because you know how to analyze problems and you're good at suggest, suggesting solutions. So that's basically what type slash instruction is about. You have to answer questions directly and you need to discuss the topic, not only justifiably, but thoroughly. You will discuss the topic thoroughly. When you say thoroughly, every bits and pieces of it must be um, presented no stones will be left unturned, all right? This task does not need much of opinions. Again, let me highlight this one. This task practically doesn't need much of opinion. So your opinion somehow will not be appreciated here. What is going to be appreciated here will be the facts that you're going to present, the events that you're going to include in your presentation. So your ideas matter. That will take us back to square one. It is so important that you read newspapers to get ideas in advance, to stock your mind with information, which will be useful for you in your exam. So 
we do not have an excuse na, sir, hindi ko po alam yung topic. Sir, hindi ko po alam yung question. Sir, wala po akong idea dyan sa question. That is why I am suggesting, I have already suggested on the very first few slides I have made that reading newspapers and reading your orange book questions will get you there. It will make you more prepared. When it comes to preparation, nothing beats that. Okay? Nagpe-prepare tayo. How? By reading in advance. So that pag ang topic natin about architecture, pag ang topic natin about healthcare, ang topic natin about education, ang topic natin about anything, mayroon kang idea. Because you know what? It is difficult to write about something that you don't know about. Okay? Mahirap magsulat tungkol sa isang bagay na in the first place, wala kang ka-idea-idea. That is something that I would like you guys to avoid. And once again, square one, read. Inform yourself. Okay? You need to provide substantive amount of evidence of your answer. So the evidence that you're going to present should be relevant. Okay, when it comes to relevance, all right, uh, I'm going to give Pluto as an example. Pluto, many people back in my elementary days, Pluto was considered a planet. Okay, Pluto, planet. Uh, afterwards, Pluto was delegated into a dwarf planet. And then, when Pluto overtook the orbit of Neptune, it has become a planet again. And what happened to Pluto after is it's now de delegated as an exoplanet. And if we're going to Google, Google what an exoplanet is, those are. Um, small planets which goes beyond the orbit of Pluto. Like some people will say, meron lang tayong nine planets. But now we have 14. You have eight planets, three plus five gas giants, uh, Pluto, one exoplanet, and four others, diba? So because people are not reading, people don't care much about this topic. Diba? They just let it go. So, but you have to always constantly remind you that information changes thoroughly. The information changes often. So you have to constantly inform yourself that what are the events and ideas that I need to, to understand? So where can I get the information? So because this is precisely what you will expect in your essay writing. So, Steps for writing, analyze the statement and question, guys. This is the most important. Again, I can't highlight this any further. This is the most important part of your assessment, okay? Brainstorm is your, you have to think about ideas. Why did this topic came into picture? What happened? Why is this uh, a topic that I'm going to talk about now? Use the proper format based on questions since by understanding the statement of the question, we will get an idea what type of instruction this is. And if it is open-ended, we have to use the format for open-ended. Next is we plan your answer. I'm going to put a red highlight on plan because this is what many people um, always tend to forget. So you need to plan your answer. You need to make sure that your answers are carefully thought of. Then write your essay. Look at that. Nasa pang five steps pa lang si writer essay. So when you see your topic, when you see your task description, you do not write right away. What you need to do is you're going to analyze first, brainstorm, and then think about what the format you're going to use based on the instruction. Then plan your answer. What are the topics that you will include in your presentation and then write your essay. Lastly, since I will no longer be there on your side to help you understand uh, the mistakes that you would probably commit, proofread. Think about what were the errors that you were constantly repeating 
when you took the test or, or when you were practicing so that we can check that yourself, okay? Check it for yourself. What were your errors when you have your tasks uh, coached? And then that's basically it. You be the one to change whatever needs changes, okay? Those are the six steps in your writing task two. So we have to follow them accordingly. Now, we're going to step one, question analysis. So this is an example of a typical open-ended question, all right? So what are we going to do in analyzing the question? So the important thing here is we have to segregate, okay? What is the topic? What is the prompt? We call it the background statement. Where is the background statement? Background statement usually is found at the beginning of your uh, task description. So in total, okay, this entire thing, this entire thing right here, okay, this entire thing, this is what we call the task description. Task description. The task description always begins with the recommended amount of time that you are going to spend to finish the task. Sakalagay dun sa umpisa, you are recommended to spend 40 minutes on this task. And it ends with write more than 250 words. So from the recommendation of time until the write more than 250 words, everything that you see there is what we call the task description. Now, I have removed the, the upper part and the instruction of the number of words because you already know that. So this is your typical instruction, typical task description. Now, what I noticed here is that there, there's no, do you agree or disagree, right? You don't notice something like that. I don't see, do you agree, disagree? What I'm seeing right here is, what challenges do they experience? Okay. And then I have another. What strategies are there to meet these challenges? That's what I saw, all right? There's no uh, discuss both views. Do you agree, disagree? Do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? What I see here are questions, direct questions to me. I am basically being asked, what challenges do they experience? So the question is, who are they, all right? Those people who move to cities or new countries more than ever before, okay? So we're going to segregate. Again, so you have the statement. So you have the statement here. The people today move to new cities or new countries more than ever before. We call it the background statement. And then we have questions. We saw questions, questions one and two. What challenges do they experience and what strategies are there to meet these challenges, okay? That is what we call the uh, question analysis. Now, beware, okay? If you do not see, uh, do you agree or disagree in your exam questions, it does not mean that automatically it will be an open-ended or a type slash question. Take a look, this type of question. People nowadays, all right? People nowadays, this is your background statement, prefer to stay at home to be educated while others opt to stay with the conventional way of education where people go to school, uh, they will be sitting in a classroom with their classmates. Now, there's a question. Which way of education, which way of education you find favorable Give examples to substantiate your choice. Sir, is this an open-ended type of question? The answer here is no. This is not an open-ended type because have a look. It says here, okay, which, which way of education you find favorable? And if we're going to return to our agree-disagree, if there's an instruction, 
asking you about your personal preference, then it can only mean one thing. That this is an agree or disagree type of essay and therefore requires the agree or disagree format. So it's important that you will not jump into conclusion right away. No, oh, I'm not seeing, do you agree or disagree? So therefore, it is an open-ended. No, it doesn't work that way. Nakita nyo, which way of education you find favorable? You're being asked to choose between two things, staying at home to be educated or conventional way of education. So if you're going to choose conventional way of education, you have to defend reason one, reason two, reason three. Again, this is agree, disagree. This is uh, exactly the topic we did two weeks ago. So reason one, reason two, reason three. That's basically what's a do you agree or disagree format. So, but a type slash is asking you what are the causes, what are the effects, what are the solutions, what are the problem, what are the solutions. So that's basically um, the two common, all right? Basically the two common types of instruction. All right, here it is. Technology, take a look. We're going to segregate that. We're going to segregate the background statement from the questions. Okay. So technology is making communication in today's world easier, but at the expense of personal contact, as many people choose to work at home in front of a computer screen. This is your background statement. Okay, I'm going to enclose it first. This is your background statement. I'm going to put a tag. So background, statement. that's it, okay? That's your background statement. Now, what dangers are there for a society? This is your first question. What dangers are there for a society? That means a green color. What dangers are there for a society which depends on computer screen rather than face-to-face -face contact for its main means of communication? Now. The question here is very simple. I'm only being asked about dangers. Dangers of being too dependent on a computer screen. Now I have a question for you, um, Jonalyn Noveno. I have a question for you. In my essay, do you think I should provide solutions to this problem? Yes, sir. Okay. What about you, Aljay and Nina? You saw that the question, okay, is asking me, what dangers are there for a society which depends on computer screen rather than face-to-face -face contact for its main means of communication? I'm only being asked with dangers. Do I have to provide um, solution to the problem? No, sir. That is absolutely correct, okay? So since the topic is only asking us for the dangers, you will refrain from giving other topics beyond their scope. Your scope is only what dangers. Now, if the question says, what dangers are there for society and recommend some solutions, that's the time that you're going to provide one. That's why it's so important to understand what the question is and how many questions are there, okay? But here's the problem. Here's the problem. How am I going to arrange that into an essay form? Okay, take a look at this, all right? Let me use uh, a red one, okay? So introduction, obviously, and then danger one, paragraph one, danger two, Paragraph two, and then conclusion. All right. So I can separate the danger for one paragraph and another danger for another paragraph. So introduction, and then space, and then paragraph one, space, and then for danger two, because they are basically the same. I'm talking about the danger of depending on computer screen, relying heavily on it, then I can use in addition to that, right? 
Okay, that's nice. All right, so that's what will happen for this type of question. Do you have any questions, guys? I'm not hearing anything. All right, so let's continue. Okay, so next type of question. All right. I'm going to underline the background statement. People in all modern societies use drugs, but today's youth are experimenting with both legal and illegal drugs at an increasingly young age. Some sociologists claim that parents and other members of the society often set a bad example. That is your background statement. Now, let's have a look at the questions. Discuss the causes. All right, I'm going to encircle that right now. Causes. Don't want the circle one, I want the square one. Okay, causes, effects of widespread drug use by young people in modern society, modern day society. And then I have another instruction. Make any recommendations. Any recommendations you feel are necessary to help fight youth drug abuse. Now, here's the thing. I will have an introduction, basically. Now, I will have conclusion. But the question is, uh, the question I have for you, Christine Magadia, how many paragraphs do I have to write in the body of my essay? How many paragraphs in the body? Three, sir. Three? Why did you come up with that idea that I have to write three paragraphs? Oh. It's not because it's three. I, my favorite number is three. No, 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 sir. Um. Hindi hindi ako nulaman ako ba? Sorry po, nito kasi si Madre. It's okay, it's okay. Well, actually, um, here's the thing. Let me help you on this, Christine. Anda, sir, kasi siya kaya parang um. Yung, yung discussion parang kulang pag tulang kasi mas mm -hmm. marami kang masasabi pag mga three, three paragraph kasi you know drugs so mas madaming yun. That's true. But look at this Christine. It's so easy to understand this. The question is number one I need to discuss the causes I need to include the effects and I have to make recommendations. That's the reason why it should be three paragraphs. So you will have an introduction. You will have a paragraph that discusses the cause. And you will have a paragraph that discusses the effects. And you will have a paragraph that discusses the recommendations that you make. Okay, that's it, Christine. Now, let thank me you, ask sir. you, Jezreel, thank you so much, Christine. Jezreel, let me ask you a question. What do you think is the cause of drug use? Not just illegal drugs, but also legal drugs. Yes, real John. Um, good morning, sir. Um, I think um, uh, probably because there's the presence of drugs. Is that correct? Um, yes, sir. And another one is um. um Okay, so just real, but we later. Okay, so uh, yeah, again, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay, so first, there's a cause of drug use, all right? And most probably, most probably people will say uh, there's drug use, there's drug abuse because there's presence of drugs. Yeah, this is easy. There's presence of drugs. And then, what do you think are the effects of drug use? Mary Rose Padilla. What do you think is the effect of drug use? Sir, sa katawan po. Bad po yes. sa katawan. Body. Because, you know, basically drugs alter the chemical compositions of 
the physical and mental well-being of a person. So it makes them addictive, it alters their perception, it impedes their judgment, so they can do bad things, right? Okay. And then I have a question for... So I'm finished with Mary Rose. Okay, Christian J. Carion, what recommendations can you give yes, for sir. drug use? What do you think can we do about it so that it will stop? Well, I guess sir, there's a pros and cons in uh, using drug abuse. Uh, drugs uh, like marijuana, it uses, in some country, it uses um, as a pain reliever for mm -hmm. those who is on a late stage cancer patient. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. For me, well, it's more about uh, how you, uh, how it's been used. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm into medical, to medical. Mm -hmm. Well, Christian, that is very accurate. Okay, your answer is actually a very uh, interesting topic. Okay, that we can discuss some other time. But my, the question is not just specifically marijuana or the medical use of some drugs, because what we're talking about is the abuse of the drugs. What do you think can we do as as a recommendation? What recommendation can you give so that the drug abuse can be stopped, or if it can't be stopped, it can be controlled? Do you have an idea? How can we do that? Well, basically, you should divert yourself into some activities, like um, what your hobbies is, and so on. <laughs> okay, that's correct. Thank you very much for participating, Christian. All right, so basically, what Christian said, and what every one of you mentioned, that uh, there were problems, okay, brought about by use of drugs. You have the presence of drugs. And then um, the effect is it's harmful for the body. And then the activities uh, are the recommendations. But you know what? You know why this essay will still fail? Yes, this essay will still get a failing score. And let me tell you why. This essay will still get a failing grade in the aisles, even though like brainstorm dial. You know, we helped each other out. Uh, everyone did a good job, okay? Because we failed to include the most important part, the youth, okay? We failed to include, let's say, your essay talked about drugs. It talked about the causes of drugs. It discussed the effects of drugs. And then you mentioned about the recommendations. But the examiner cannot find even one word, even one word about youth. Young people, children, juvenile, youth, young ones, walang nakita. So basically, your essay is not relevant to the topic because you're talking about the adults. You're talking about the, the people who are not from the youth sector. That's what, make, that's what make that essay, the ones that I erased, fail. That's what is going to make that essay fail. So now, gawin na natin to ng tam. All right, we're going to do it right this time. So I have to basically do an introduction. Okay, so introduction. And then the cause of youth drug abuse you don't have to go elsewhere, okay? You don't have to go elsewhere. The cause of drug abuse is already in front of your eyes. Parents and other members of the society often set a bad example. This will be, okay, this will be the cause of youth drug abuse because the young ones, what they're seeing from their parents, they imitate it. What about the other members of the society? All right, movies, songs. Imagine the, the music videos that young people watch, okay? They usually see some guys taking drugs or there's a fire in the background. There's some females and then cars and then they're like rapping and everything. They think that those are cool. So if you are um, a parent, 
and your other members of the society who set a bad example, and that is one of the major causes, that's one of the major causes of youth drug abuse. Now, of course, there's an effect, and I would take it from um, Mary Rose, if I'm not mistaken, about the, the effects of widespread drug use, and the effect of widespread drug use is, will, uh, well, the body, okay? As I've mentioned, the young one's body are still developing. There will be compositions in their body that will be altered because of this, and they will become addicted. I should also mention the legal drug, okay? The legal drug use. What are those legal drugs? Okay, so we have cough syrup, antidepressants, um, many of the deaths in the US now are due to the use of painkillers, okay? They mix it up with a certain compound, which I'm not going to disclose here because of um, legal concerns. So what they do is they mix those legal drugs together, which become harmful for the body. So that's a very huge problem that um, their country is facing, okay, United States. So that's what's happening. And then my recommendation, I would take it from Christian, all right? My recommendation here would be still hobbies. They need to in involve themselves in in a rebuilding type of uh, community, all right? So if they have this idea, if they feel this inclusion in the community where they belong to, then they don't have to resort to any types of things that would make them cool on paper, okay, which is practically not. So that's it. That is how I'm going to make a brainstorm out of it. Again, I'm not yet planning. I'm just brainstorming, okay? How important just one word. How important, just one word in my essay writing. And that one word is youth. Let us not forget that this is where the question revolves. The topic revolves with youth, not just with any other types of persons, okay? So let us brainstorm. So again, people, okay, move to new cities, or new countries more than ever before? What challenges do they encounter due to migration? Now, I will call on um, Aljay Cortez. Aljay, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. So, Aljay, you have experience going abroad. I want yes, you to sir. tell me directly what challenges did you experience when you migrated abroad, when you worked there? Uh, una po sir, yung ano, uh, social, uh, sorry, yung culture sir. Culture? Culture po, okay. unang una. Kasi One? different uh, place yung napuntahan ko. So, right. hindi to adjust for myself. That's one, okay. So, who else here have experienced um, being an OFW besides LJ? What about you, Jess Real? Have you tried becoming an OFW in the past? Um, no, sir. Um, oh, not um, yet. All right, that's yes, nice. Yes, not yet. Okay, what about you, Jonalyn? Uh, no, sir. All right. Mary Rose Padilla, have you experienced being an OFW? Sir, the language po. Yung salita nila is different. Which country did you go to? Ay, Taiwan, before? sir. Taiwan. Taiwan. Sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So language, so culture, language, all right, that's another. And uh, Alvin also mentioned culture. Uh, Alvin also mentioned socialization. So let's include that, so socialization. So basically, um, socialization. All right, so basically, due to cultural indifference, all right, which is under language, it's, differ it's difficult for people to also socialize. So that is the challenge, the, the main bracket and the subtypes of different challenges people encounter because they migrate. All right, this is your uh, body one. Now for number two, how could these problems be reduced? All right, 
So how could the problems that people encounter due to migration be reduced? So what do you think, uh, what are the ways? Okay, let me ask again. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Mary Rose Padilla, what were the, the steps that you took so that you will feel uh, much more included? So that you can overcome those problems that you encountered. Sir, self-educate, self sir. Self-educate. So that you will not be caught off guard. Oh, wala pala silang rice, di ba? Or iba pala yung food nila. Yung pala yung transportation system nila. Ganun pala makipag-usap sa kanila, right? So that's correct. What about you, uh, LJ? Let me call you once again. What? Do you think are the solutions to the problems brought about by the things encountered when you migrated? Uh, I think, sir, I know we need to understand their cultures, then their uh, uh, ways of uh, living. Like okay. Now. Well, of course, uh, Alvin, you missed your family back home, right? When you were in, in the UK. Yes. So what did you do? Uh, when I, sir, no, kapag, uh, when I had my day off, I constantly contacted them so that we can uh, communicate, especially communicate. my children, yes. All right. So if socialization is your problem, then you can use other means. You have the internet to know uh, the culture of the country. To learn in advance their language and how people socialize. And if you're, you know, homesick, you can try and contact your family back home. You can use internet once again. That will be our solution to the topic. So again, I have introduction. I have a paragraph dedicated for the challenges. Listen to me carefully. I have a paragraph dedicated to the challenges people encounter due to migration. I have a paragraph dedicated to the solution so that those problems by migrants can be solved. And then I have a conclusion. So the reason why it's not five paragraphs, unlike the one here, is because the question kanina was this. What, was, what are the causes? What are the effects? What are the solutions? So you will not um, basically, uh, you will basically involve all those three in each paragraph. But in this case, we're only asked with the, the challenges. We already know ano yung cost. Bakit nagkaroon silang challenge? Because they migrated. All right? And what are the solutions? What are the recommendations that you can give? How can these predicaments be solved? So, that's it. That is the reason why it can become two, it can become three paragraphs in the body because of how many questions you will answer. So, if the question, what are the problems lang? Okay, sabi lang, what are the problems? So, lang tinanong na what are the solutions? So basically, your introduction, problem one, problem two, conclusion. So what are the problems? What are the solutions? So you have your introduction. You have your problem one. Sorry. Oh, yeah. What are the causes? What are the effects? What are the solutions? And then you have your conclusion. So that is how we can differentiate those um, types of paragraphs and content by brainstorming. So how many questions are there? Okay, remember this. How many questions are there means... How many paragraphs in the body you should write? Sir, bakit po yung what are the dangers or what are the problems encountered by people? Yun lang po yung question. Bakit po dalawang paragraphs siya? Because a writing task to essay can never be three paragraphs. It's always a minimum of four and a maximum of five. Always remember that. So you will not be congesting all the problems in just one thick, big paragraph. You will be dividing them into separate ones. So you can... Do this one paragraph for the first problem and do this one, another paragraph for the second problem so that they are not too bulky, okay? So that's how you brainstorm once again. So exercise. Okay, so let me differentiate first. Let me draw something here. So question, the question here is, what are the problems? So basically, I'm just going to write an intro. Later, I will tell you how to write a proper intro. And then body. 
paragraph one okay it's equivalent to your problem one and then body paragraph two is your problem two because they're both problems i can use the connector in addition meanwhile or over furthermore and then conclusion now what if your question is like this your question So topic, so there's a topic, and then what are the problems? And solution, okay? So that's how you're going to make, what, how you're going to make the essay for this one. So you have obviously your introduction. You have your body paragraph one that contains the problem. I can also add another problem. And then you have your body paragraph two. You have the solution. So before I proceed to the solution, I can probably mention something like, there are a lot of ways to solve the problems encountered by migrants, if that's my topic. Or I can also add something like, on the other hand, or I will be using in contrast, in comparison, okay? So solution, and then additionally, or moreover, because I've already used additionally, so use variety of connectors, um, solution two. And then I will write a conclusion. Again, guys, you don't have to copy this because I already have a, um, I already have a PDF file for this. But again, if you want to take screenshots, that's fine with me. Or if you, you want to watch the replay later and then take the screenshot so that you will not be bothered writing and scribbling anything. Again, uh, feel free to write anything if that's what makes you comfortable. Okay. But, you know, I just want you guys to, you know, just put your eyes and ears on this lecture so that you can understand it much further. Okay. So that's uh, four, four. Now, what if your question is like this? All right, what if your question is like this? I will use the blue one, it's pleasing to the eyes. Um, your question is causes, effects, and then recommendation. So you will have your intro, you will have your body paragraph one, which is the cause, and then body paragraph two, which is the effect, and then you have your body paragraph three, which is the solution to the problem. And then conclusion, which I'm going to talk about later. So that's, that makes it a total of five. So that's how we can differentiate the five types, okay? Or sorry, the three types of essay writing for this, okay? Based on the number of paragraphs that you're going to write, it will depend to what type of question you're going to encounter. So again, if you want to take a screenshot now, if you want to take a screenshot uh, later during the replay, do so. Okay, I'm just going to give you 10 seconds to that, uh, to do that. Okay, I hope you guys were able to take a screenshot already. So I shall now proceed. So this is the question. People today move to new cities or new countries more than ever before. So what challenges do they experience? What strategies are there to meet these challenges? So how am I going to write an introduction? So introduction. You have to include 
all the things that you will discuss later in the body. All right, that's how you do your introduction. In this part, you have to include all the things that you will discuss later in the body. So since your essay will feature that there's, there are challenges and there are strategies, then you have to include those challenges and strategies in your introduction. So the very first thing is you also have, have to acknowledge, so acknowledge the problem in the topic. And the problem here is that there's a concern regarding this migration trend. So we will be renaming this people today move to new cities or new countries more than ever before. Because when you move to one place to another, we refer to that as migration. So we will be referring to that as migration. So you ask yourself, what do you think is the reason why people migrate from their original city or from their original country into another country? Like the question goes for you because you're candidates. The reason why you're taking IELTS is because you want to go to another country, okay? And there are two possible ways, okay? There are two ways. Uh, there are two answers why people migrate. Number one, people migrate for studies. And number two, people migrate because of work opportunities. So either way, migration, because they need to study or work, okay, is happening, is becoming a trend recently. That's it. I just need to acknowledge. So people, I will replace people with many individuals, all right? Many individuals and their families uh, migrate to new countries because of studies and work opportunities, period. Due to this, there are some problems that they encounter, but there are some solutions to overcome the predicament. Okay, so that's how you're going to introduce it. You, in, you include the people today, move to new cities more than ever before, okay, you involve this one, and then you stop and you added another sentence, what challenges do they experience and the, what strategies are there to meet the challenges that you mentioned. So that is how you introduce, okay? You paraphrase, you get the main idea. So this is my sample introduction. And let me read this to you, okay? So it is undeniable. I'm going to use a spotlight, all right. It is undeniable that the number of people who migrate to search for better opportunities is continuously increasing. And there is no sign that this will stop anytime soon. This offers um, a lot of advantages, not only to families, but also to the economy. However, this is the opposite side, there are so many difficulties migrants face abroad. And in reality, some of them are already sacrificing the quality of life in exchange for quantity. Despite this, there are measures to address such predicaments with the use of modern technology. Now, did I spoil, did I spoil what problems the migrants will encounter? I didn't. Did I spoil what the measures can be done? Well, I mentioned the method that will be used, which is modern technology, but I didn't specifically discuss how this use of modern technology can overcome the problem I am going to discuss later. So that's it. Avoid spoiling, avoid mentioning the specific ideas in the introduction because the purpose of introduction is to generalize the topic. Okay? So that's how you are going to make an introduction out of this. Uh, well, before we begin our body discussion, all right? I will be giving you as much as four minutes, four, four minutes 
to try and make an introduction out of this. All right? I will be asking you randomly about the introductions that you will make. Okay, I will ask you randomly for that. And we shall see how can your introduction be improved. All right? So this is your question. You have four minutes. Your timer begins now for this question. You have four minutes. Make an introduction. Hey guys, you still have one minute remaining.
Okay, guys, time is up. All right, so first of all, let me hear uh, Al J and Nina, let me hear your introduction. Sorry, di ko po natapos. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, drug usage is very common in present day population. However, teens starting to use illegal products at a very young age. Adults show a bad model. There are a lot of reasons why this has occurred. Hanggan mo lang ko. Okay, sige. Actually, that's really nice because you were able to reach that part, Nina. So it was really appreciated. I would like to see that in, in full essay form. So your path that you're taking, Nina, is actually quite great, okay? Uh, what about yours, Christine Magadia? Let me hear it. Ah, uh, sir. Di ko maano eh. Um, lang eh. Um, yeah, okay lang. It's okay. Uh, young ones this, these days are curious with both legal and illegal drugs mm -hmm. and increasing uh, ko kasi sinulat eh. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Uh, uh, But yeah. I like the, the first part though. You know, the, the, the ones that you want to include Young people, young ones these days, those are the things that you must include in an introduction. So, but don't forget, if we're going to finish that, you remember that you will include there are some causes, there will be effects, and there will be recommendations. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. So, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type it live. Let me probably uh, do this here. Okay. All right. So people in all modern societies use drugs, but today's youth are experimenting with both legal and illegal drugs at, and at an increasingly young age. So um, I can probably start, but it is an alarming situation these days where many young people abuse both I will replace legal with um, medications and illicit drugs so that I will not be repeating them. All right. It is an alarming situation these days where many young people abuse both medications and illicit drugs, all right? So remember, guys, that the word illicit is different from the word e, illicit, which is illicit means shows, okay? And illicit drugs. Um, there are many factors. So you have to claim that there's a, a reason, okay? There are many factors for this predicament, which is um, one of the synonyms of problem. Predicament, there are many factors for this predicament and the result, the results are negative if they continue. Therefore, certain Proactive measures must be taken. I can't see my pen anymore. Measures must be taken to solve this uh, issue. And okay, that will be my introduction. So it is an alarming situation these days where many young people abuse both medications and illicit drugs. Okay. I can actually add prescribed, prescribed medications and illicit drugs. There are many factors for this predicament and the results are negative if they continue. Therefore, certain proactive measures, I'm sorry for my spelling here, measures must be taken to solve this issue. So 
this is exactly what you need to include in your uh, introduction. Take a look at this. I'm going to put some highlights, all right? Um, this is the first part until this one. This is it. It is an alarming blah, blah, blah. Lisa drives. And then discuss the causes and some effects. I'm going to use green. Causes. I'm going to use blue for effects. So for this one, factors, causes. And then I'm going to use blue for effects. And some effects of widespread drug use by young people in modern day society. And I use the results are negative if they continue. Now, make recommendations you feel. All right, I'm going to use yellow. Recommendations, all right, for recommendations. Therefore, certain proactive measures must be taken to solve this issue. So if you're going to compare, your essay is technically a book, all right? Your entire essay is technically a book that discusses everything here. And then your introduction serves as the table of contents. Kung ano yung ilalagay mo later sa body, sa entire essay, that is what your introduction should include. And it should always be similar, all right, with how the arrangement and style of your task description are presented. Kung makikita nyo guys, side by side, Parang ito yung task description. This is the introduction. My causes, my effect, my recommendation. My causes, my effect, my recommendation. Ang aking introduction. So they are side by side. All right? So that is your introduction. You're introducing the theme. You're introducing the theme of your topic, but you're including all the things that you will min mention later. Okay? So try pa tayo ng isa. Okay. So we have the technology is making communication in today's world easier, okay? But at the expense of personal contact, as many people choose to work at home in front of a computer screen. So you can claim something like uh, modernization of technology has enabled employees to work from home for a variety of reasons. All right. Um, but physical interaction is no longer important with the, the expense of personal contact, okay? Due to this, all right, there are many dangers that the society can experience because of the limited personal contact between workers and people alike. It's my introduction. So let's try another one. Okay. Okay, so what about the body? So again, depending on how many um, topics you need to cover in your essay, that is how many paragraphs your body should include. So I have here the challenges that people experience. I have the strategies to meet the challenge. So I need to present a body paragraph that contains the, the challenges. Okay, so here's my first challenge. Every culture is unique and differences in traditional beliefs 
may lead to social isolation if one does not learn to adapt. This ignorance could lead to setbacks and it may give rise to racial discrimination, bullying, and other problems faced by overseas settlers. Remember that this paragraph and this paragraph will be combined, ha? Okay, remember that. Okay, they're just one paragraph. I am just separating them so that you can see that this is challenge number one. This is challenge number two. Because the question sa atin, what are these challenges? So I, I just separated them into two paragraphs so that you can see that this is the first challenge, this is another challenge. So if I am going to put them in one paragraph in real life, so I'll be using something to connect them, all right? And I'll be using the word um, additionally. And then comma. Additionally, the comfort and security that families and friends bring are also very significant aspects of a person's life. Such feeling of belongingness might be hard to achieve in a vastly diverse world. And it takes time, courage, and sacrifice for anyone to fully adjust. Next paragraph. Nonetheless, all right. Oh, sorry. Nonetheless, I'm going to use red. Okay, this is the first. Nonetheless, preparation is a simple yet valuable action which could be a migrant's tool against any difficulty. With the help of technology, again, that's my solution. It is much simpler for people to research for general information before they go to the country, right? Through browsing the internet and watching informative television shows, being knowledgeable about other culture and norm is not going to be mission impossible. Love and belongingness. So since I'm going to add something here, I could probably use the word um, moreover and then comma. Love and belongingness could be felt in a different parts of the world. As long as there's an open heart and an open mind, indeed the willingness to adapt to change can blow all the migration blues away. So remember guys, those samples will be posted later naman sa ating Facebook group. So you don't have to worry much about uh, whether nakukopin nyo ba siya or hindi. Okay? Babalikan natin yan. So what about conclusion? All right. So in conclusion, we gracefully exit the essay by making a quick wrap up sentence and then end on some memorable thought, perhaps a quotation or an interesting piece of logic. Sometimes call to action. You can do any of these. You can summarize your main points. You can answer the question, so what? You can conclude by giving out statements and quotations, conclude by relating the reality or factual events that you know. Um, suggest, recommend some possible solutions. Now, if I'm not mistaken, ikaw ba yung tinanong ko kanina, John Alin Noveno about magbibigay ba tayo ng, ng solution doon sa what are the dangers lang. Tama, ikaw yan, John Alin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this one, I would like to point out how important this is. All right. There will be, there will be questions that doesn't ask for your solution. But it doesn't mean that you will not give one. Because there's a part in the essay where you can give one. And you can give one in the conclusion. Ulitin ko. Sabe, what are the causes? What are the effects? Sir, hindi po ako hiningan. Hindi po ako hiningian ng solution. Okay, hanap lang ako ng blank na, ano, na slide ha. Okay, hanap lang ako ng blank na slide para meron akong mapaglagyan. All right. Okay, ulitin natin to ha. Sabi sa question, what are the causes and effects of, salibawa na lang, environmental degradation or no, environmental degradation of global warming na lang or climate change para mas maganda. Okay. So basically, your intro, intro will contain your acknowledgement. All right. 
this will be your intro. Again, intro, sorry. Um, acknowledge. Environment is the main topic. All right, this is your introduction. Listen. Now, in the body, all right, the body paragraph, this is where you're going to put the causes. So you will have uh, cause A. Plus connecting device. Moreover, in addition to that, furthermore, and then cause B to complete your paragraph one for causes. Now, same goes with this. Body paragraph two. This is where you're going to present the effect. We're going to put the effect. And then, so you have effect one or effect A, and then you have your effect B. So definitely this plus sign right here uh, means that you're going to use a connecting device, like moreover, furthermore, in addition to that, meanwhile, okay? And then conclusion. I've mentioned this to Jonalyn, and I would like everyone to understand how important conclusion is. In the question, you are not being asked for a conclusion. The only question here is the examiner want you to mention the causes and the effects. So in the body, listen, all right? Because of this body, no, Solution, because it's not being asked. Am I clear? All right. So what are the causes and effects of climate change? That is your question. So in the body, of course, your introduction first, acknowledge, blah, blah, blah. There are causes of climate change, but there are also effects. That's it. You're finished. And then body paragraph one, causes of climate change. Let's say deforestation, um, turning the forests into agricultural purposes like um, cow grazing areas to produce beef or where they cut the trees in Malaysia so that they can plant palm trees all right, to produce palm oil. What else? Smoke vultures, factories, and the likes. All right. And then effect, you will explain how the, the effect translate into climate change. First, the world will become warmer. The effect is what we call the greenhouse effect because the greenhouse gases are trapped. And then it's now the main driver why climate change is happening. And you explain what climate change is. It's a phenomenon where the expected rainfall or the expected temperature, all right, are not occurring. The ice caps, the polar ice caps are melting and it affects the livelihood of agriculture. It destroys properties, um, huge tsunamis, storms are occurring much more frequently. That is because of climate change, tornadoes and the likes. And then it's not asking you for solution, right? It's not asking you for a solution. But when you reach, listen to me carefully, when you reach the conclusion part, you are freelance here. You can do a freelance writing you will still include a solution. So sir, why am I going to write a solution for the conclusion? Because this idea, imagine this, we do not want the examiner to feel bad about the issue, that this is an issue which is not solved. Tinanong lang yung cost, tinanong yung effect, bakit ako magbibigay ng solution? Guys, I'm going to speak in Filipino here para malinaw, all right? You will be giving solution in conclusion because you want the examiner to understand that as a candidate, you care for the welfare. Ayaw mong iwan yung topic discussion mo na hindi siya na-solve. Ayaw mong iwan na problema lang siya, na climate change lang siya. Ayaw mong iwan na drug abuse lang siya. You want some happy ending to happen. Okay? At doon nga papasok yung tinuro ko sa inyo na if 
quarter. So itong TF clauses, ano ito? Ito yung tinuro ko sa grammar 4, yung conditional statement. Magbibigay ka ng condition na dapat gawin. Okay? Na kapag ginawa yung condition na to, mayroong mangyayari sa future. Okay. Sabihin mo dun sa conclusion mo, climate change is a phenomenon that affects not only the livelihood of people but the lives of many individuals as well. If, oh, again, ayan na siya. If the government and the society will work together to solve the problem brought by climate change, then, all right, the world can improve and it will become much better for the future generation. Ganun ang mga conclusion. Hindi ka hinihingan ng conclusion. Malinaw tayo dyan, ha? Ito sa question mo, guys. You are not being asked of a conclusion. The only questions are causes and effects. But when you reach conclusion, let me repeat. When you reach conclusion, you will provide solution using your if clauses, your conditional statement, yung tinuro ko sa inyo, doon sa inyong grammar for. So recap. Paano ba si if clauses? So if, mga pwedeng gamitin na words, unless, provided that. Yan. Tapos, nasa simple present ang verb. Tapos, lagyan mo ng will sa susunod na clause. Halimbawa, if it rains today, I will not go to the park. So condition yun. Kung uulan, hindi ako pupunta ng park. That's condition. So, sabi mong conditional statement, if the society will work together with the government, there will be a much brighter future for the next generation to uh, revert back, okay, ibalik, okay, to heal the planet, something like that. So that's it. Okay, may question po ba tayo dito? Kasi gusto ko lang ma-clarify itong idea na to bago tayo mag-proceed sa isa pang topic. Mary Rose, Jezreel, Christine, Jonalyn, LJ, Christian J. Do you have any questions here? Okay, so I will take that as a uh, no question. So, sir, what about if this is the question? Ayan na. So, question, ha? Oh, meron causes, effects, solution. So, syempre, intro, lalagay mo yan. May cause ka, may effect ka, may solution. Tama? Mm. So, dito sa body, body paragraph 1, lalagay mo ngayon yung cause. Body paragraph 2, lalagay mo ngayon yung effect. Body paragraph 3, lalagay mo ngayon yung solution. Ano ngayon magiging conclusion mo? Hmm. Ulit yung ulit yun. Cause, effect, solution. Summary of what you have talked about. All right. So if your question contains what are the causes, what are the effects, what are the solutions, the introduction, there are causes, there are effects, and there are solutions. So body paragraph one, causes. Body paragraph two, effects. Body paragraph three, solution. Conclusion, the problem uh, has a cause and the effects are negative, but the solution, if it is done by the people and the government, it will create a much brighter future. That's how you do your cause-effect solution question for the conclusion part. All right? So, ilalagay mo yung summary of the cause, effect, and solution. So, again, the problem here will be the words. Okay? What are the words that you can replace causes with? Okay. Can you give me a synonym of cause? Mary Rose Padilla? Mary Rose Padilla, can you give me um, can you give me a synonym of cause? Blood out na ba si Mary Rose? <laughs> so wala na nga siya. Iwanan tayo ni Mary Rose. Alright. So what about you? Christian J. Carion, can you give me synonyms of cause? Uh, sir, root. Root? Probably. 
Uh, I could use reason. Alibaba, cause. Cause of land degradation. There are many reasons why. What else? What other words for root and reasons? Origin daw po, sir. Origin? Origin of the problem, probably. Okay. But if I'm going to do the body here, tinan nyo ha, asa, gamitin ko yung reasons. There are many reasons. All right. Oh, Jezreel, you raise your hand. Are you going to put something here? The synonyms of cost? Yes, sir. Yes, Jezreel, um, let me hear it. Source, spot, source. Source. So we have root, reasons, origin, source. Okay, that's nice. Oh, another? Uh, uh, LJ and Nina? You have more to, to add? For our sure, element. Element? You could probably live with element. So I have, look at this sentence. There are many reasons why people abuse drugs or one of the major causes of um, climate change. All right. Another is factor. You can use factor. All right. So one factor of illiteracy, all right, is poverty. So I will be using factor. I'll be using reasons. I could probably use origin and source, but I will not be using element. So reasons, um, causes, factors, source. So you can you can use those um, those words. What else? Uh, effects. What about the synonyms of effects? All right, so let me hear your input, Christine Magadia. Christine? Effects. Mm. Google nga sana ako, sir. Eh. <laughs> Kaya Google. lang. Uh... Effects, let me help you, Christine. Outcome. Ayun nga, no? Outcome. All right. Uh, besides outcome, what else? All right. Uh, anyone? Do I have um, Jonalyn? Jonalyn, tell me what other what are the words that I can replace effects with? Drawbacks, sir. Drawbacks. I'll put that later. Let's talk about later about drawbacks and why. I put drawbacks here. All right. Effects. Why is the drawback on the bottom? Sir, outcome. Yes, Christine. Results or result? Results. Results will be uh, will be nice. So outcomes and results. Those are the ones that I will use. But the reason why I said drawbacks will come later. Because the drawbacks para siya sa negative. Eh. So the si consequence, at the si drawback, ay para siya sa negative na effect. Diba? So sa negative na effect, drawbacks and consequence, meron din tayong positive na effect. Diba? So para sa negative, yan na nga, negative, si drawbacks, si consequence. Para sa positive, the words that you can use for positive, uh, wait, okay. The words that you can use to replace positive ng result, okay, would be, ano? Ano mga words for positive result? Kabalik tayo ng drawbacks. Ayan. Uh, let me hear it. Jess Riel. Um, realize po. Realize? 
Probably. That's a verb. Uh, what else? Attain. Attain. Okay, thank you so much, Jezreel. What about you, Christian J? What are the opposite of the word drawbacks? Okay. Uh, LJ Nina, you're raising your hands. Benefits po. Benefits? Kailan ko tinuro yan? Discuss both views. Ba? Benefits? Ano pa? Positive, positive result? Positive outcome? Okay. Advantages. Dami. So thank you so much for your input, LJ. So those are the words that I can use to uh, replace negative effects, positive effects, or if it's plain and simple effects. Ayaw mong bigyan ito ng kulay na ito ay positive or negative. You can use outcome or results. All right? Now, what about solution? All right, so solutions. What do you think are the words that we can replace solutions with? All right, so let me give you your turn now, Christian J. Yes, sir. Solutions. Can you help me with uh, a, a synonym for solution? Sorry, sir. <laughs> meron, uh, meron akong, meron akong inattendant din. <laughs> oh, no okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, Christian. All right. So, again, let me continue here. I can use ways to solve. All right. I can use the word means. Means to solve. Way out. All right. And the things. All right. So, solution. You can actually use um, a variety of words like there are many ways to solve. All right, so problems. I say problem, magiging ano rin yan. So problem, you can replace problem with concern, issue. What else? A predicament. All right. So again, I hope everyone can use these words right here because. They will be useful so as not to commit repetition for your vocabulary and um, lexical resource. All right. Does everyone, does anyone have a question? All right. So let me continue. All right, this is my conclusion. So you see the summary here. Several factors might be great hindrances to people who migrate. Uh, oh, wait, wait, this is the wrong sample pala. Okay, let me give you a good sample. Okay. That was the wrong sample, I'm sorry. Okay, this one, we will be doing this from the top. The movement of people from agricultural areas to work. All right, let me hear it can cause serious problems in both places. What are the serious problems and what measures can be taken to solve this problem? Let us brainstorm. Okay, so this one, this red circle here, represent the agricultural areas. And then this circle right here represents the urban areas. Oh, let, let's uh, write labels on them. So you have the urban, and then you have the agriculture. Yeah. Now, each of the areas are represented by people. As you can see, guys, I'm putting stars here. I'm going to put as much stars as I can 
in urban area because we already know that in urban areas like Manila or huge cities around the world like Seoul, Tokyo, Los Angeles, New York, so you have tons of people. But in agricultural areas, you know, few people. Like when you travel to Pangasinan, you're going to take the route of Tarlac. Okay? There's not so many cars or vehicles that you will encounter along the road. So that's the idea. Now, what if, all right, what if the people, take a look at this, the people from agricultural areas, I will be removing some people here. Okay, you see that? They will go to urban areas. What do we call that process? Migration. So we call this process migration. But this is the problem. You see that there are not many people left in agricultural areas. But there's also a lot of other agricultural areas that have people in them. So if those people represented by stars, all right, will be few because they will go to urban, see what happens, see what happens here. The urban area now becomes densely populated. And there's the question. It can cause serious problems, not only in one, but both places, in urban areas and agricultural areas. So now the question I have here is, what do you think are the problems brought by this? And what solutions are we going to do? What do you think are the means or ways out to solve this problem? Okay, so here's the concern. Agricultural areas, all right? Agricultural areas, let me put this in box. These places, as the name implies, they are the ones who make sure that a place is food secure. So this is where you get the, the food from your table. This is where you get your rice from. This is where you get vegetables from, even fruit, um, dairy, dairy products like milk, cheese, and things related to agriculture sector. So if less workers, if fewer workers will be left in the farmlands, then you know the food security for the country will be will not be met. Okay, and urban areas, look at that, how heavily populated the location is, how heavily populated this is. It's so populated already. Okay. So hindi na yung mga tao. So they will be competing for resources. They will be competing for opportunities. Okay, that's the problem. And if they cannot find work or stable jobs, those people resort to crimes. That's why um, urban areas around the world, like Metro Manila, are the ones which crime rate are very high. So that's the explanation. Now, those are the serious problems. So problem for agriculture sector is there will be fewer workers left to work for the farm. So yung food security, hindi natin meet. In urban places, they will compete for spaces, for resources, and even for opportunities. And if those opportunities uh, are not met, then crime rates increase, okay? Now, there's another question. What do you think are the measures? I can also use measures as replacement for, for solution. Ano daw ang solution natin for this problem? Of course, what we should do, okay, is take a look at this. It's very simple. Look at the stars right here. We will be removing them and we will be transferring them in agriculture areas. We'll be uh, dividing them properly so that more workers are in agricultural areas and few people are left in urban districts. See that? So it's much better now. But it's difficult to say na ilipat lang basta. Because, you know, people have their free will. 
people already know that that is a challenge that they must face. And yet, they're still in those urban areas. Nandun pa rin sila sa mga cities around the world. All right? So you can see this. Andun pa rin sila. So hindi natin sila pwedeng pilitin. What we can do instead is to determine the source of the problem. Why do you think people who are working in the farm, okay, move from agricultural sectors to urban districts? Well, it's probably because of the difficult job they have at work. Imagine, sa isang farm, uh, if you're planting rice, uh, at maximum, kung hybrid yung palay, three times anihan sa isang taon. So that means three times the salary in a year. Or worse, kapag may mga nabagyo, huwag naman sana, two times. Ang baba pa ng palitan ng palay. Diba? So that's a concern. So they thought na, alright, magsusumikap ako, parang mga anak ko, hindi na sila maging farmer. Pag na-nursing ko na lang, ibang bansa. Pag engineer na lang, ibang bansa. So fewer workers and fewer farmer families are left in the farm. And what happens is become uh, difficult yung job. So dahil mahirap yung work, uh, wala silang masyado mga equipment for that. Tapos hindi maayos yung technology na ginagamit nila. Tubig lang nagiging concern. Hindi nila ma malaman paano kukuha ng water. Hindi yung irrigation sa kanilang farm all right, is very costly. Yun yung reason. So, for you to solve that, siyempre, you offer mo, you have to solve the root cause of the problem, which is to make the agricultural areas better places to work at. So, nandoon dapat yung educational, technological, at saka economical sectors. So, hindi lang tayo mag-invest doon sa, sa work, sa farm, but we're also going to invest technologically, equipment, um, gagawin nating competitive technologically ang mga farmers, Gagamit tayo ng mga rice dryers. Yeah. Gagamit tayo ng mga malalaking machines to lighten the workload. And we will be giving them investments. Sorry, we'll be giving them incentives. Sorry, okay, incentives for their work. Because they are farmers, they will be having more benefits. Parang ganun, okay? To encourage them to stay in this um, activity. So, how can I translate that anyway? How can I translate that into essay? That's it. Okay. Uh, the migration trend happening these days seems to pose more risks um, than benefits to both the agricultural regions and the urban districts. Rural migrants flock to the business centers to find more stable jobs, but as the population in the cities increases, sorry, uh, opportunities for employment become less likely. Again, I'm not going to read everything here. Okay. I'm going to upload this to our Facebook group. This is the one that I would like you guys to brainstorm on. This is the most difficult topic that you might probably encounter. So what I want you to do, okay, is to listen carefully. Okay, we will be breaking them down part by part. So don't worry, once again, the sample for the agricultural area, the urban district problem and solution essay, will be uploaded later, okay? Para mas maayos lang siya. Kasi may mga hindi ako na-edit na parts, I'm sorry. All right, so basahin ko lang. In many cities, an increasing number of people do not know their neighbors and there's no sense of community anymore. Okay, here's the question. What do you think are the causes of this lack of sense of community and suggest measures that might deal with this situation? Okay, now here's the thing. Okay, let me draw. Okay, let me draw. I'm going to draw a square. Okay, urban places. Urban. Cities. All right. So, according to our question, many of the people who live in urban places, in the cities, they don't know who their neighbors are. All right? They don't know who their neighbors are. What do you think are the causes? Okay. Let me repeat my question. Many of the people in urban places, in cities, Manila, they don't know their neighbors. 
Let me ask you a question, Jezreel. What do you think is the reason why people in urban places and cities don't know their neighbors anymore? Bakit hindi nila kilala mga kapitbahay nila? All right, Jezreel, you can speak now. Okay, Jezreel, I can't hear you. No, All right, but... let me ask you instead, Christine Magadia. <clears throat> Sir, uh, uh, siguro dahil they don't care who their neighbor is or are, they don't care. Bahay, ganun eh. Yes, they don't care. Well, you know what? There's a reason why they don't care. They simply don't care. They don't care because of reasons. And that reason, lilinawa natin yan. One, they're busy with their work. Right? When you say they're busy with their work, they will wake up six in the morning. They will uh, prepare for their work. They will travel. This is stuck up as a traffic, rush hour, late to work, and then grit and grind. We can bahay six o'clock, dial traffic, 8 p.m. kana naka uwe. So you see, parang hirap na eight o'clock na pagod ka na, tapos inaanto ka pa, galing ka sa work. Tapos kakatok ka pa kapit. Hey, kapit-bahay, mag-usap naman tayo. You get the idea, Christine? Yes, sir. All right. Next, next idea. Why people in, uh, in different places, in urban places, don't know their neighbors is because it's difficult for them. Difficult due to living conditions. Because imagine mo, all right, when you say different, difficult, sorry, because of living condition, this is what I mean. Okay, um, let me draw a building here. All right, go not in black. Not in blue. Hmm. So I'm drawing a building here, and then. Okay, in the building, here's a room, condominium. So nakita niyo yung magkakapitbahay nasa taas ng isa't isa. Or worse, lagi nakasarado yung kanila mga room. So it's difficult to communicate kasi yung ating mga living structures in metropolitan areas are not built for socialization. Okay, so yun yung mga causes na gagamitin ko. Now, what do you think is the solution? All right, let us talk about the solution. Ano kaya ang solution para maging mas magkakakilala, mas maging unified ang ating community sa urban places? Jonalyn Noveno, can you give me one solution? Ano sir, uh, create an organization, parang housing organization. Oh. Ano yan eh, um, yung homeowners association. Parang gano'n. <laughs> yes, oo. Uh -huh. Sige, magkaroon tayo ng organization. Sige, solution. So, ang solution daw natin ay organization. Eh, question ko dito. Donalyn, paano naman yung mga bata? Siyempre, hindi naman sila pwede mag magkaroon, di ba? Ng Homeowners Association Kids Edition. Hindi pwede yun, di ba, Donalyn? So, ano sa tingin mo? Para lahat-lahat tayo. Lahat, bata, matanda, Pwede. Oh, Christine Magadia, you raised your hand. Sure. Gathering, sir. Gathering. Gatherings. Sige. So, gatherings. Huwag lang ngayon, so, sir. Gatherings. Magkakaroon tayo ng mga events na tinatawa. Ano mga events ito? O, oh, di ba? Dapat ito suitable for the age appropriate. Dapat ito ay age appropriate for the members of the community. So, anong ibig sabihin ko doon sa mga events na to? Di ba? Sports. So, the trade. Sports. Okay, sports. Diba? Ano pa? Mga Halloween, mga costume contests. Yan. Christmas party, ganun siya. Christmas parties. Pero again, huwag tayo maglalagay ng Halloween at Christmas party kasi yun ay 
may kinalaman sa religion. So, para hindi lang siya masyadong one-sided. Okay? So, alisin natin yung mga biases na yan. So, that's it. That's the solution. What else? Kung bukod sa gathering, bukod sa organization, may mga location tayo. LJ and Nina. May mga lugar tayo sa urban places na hindi naka-building type. So, paano kaya natin mas magiging uh, connected ang samahan ng mga magkakapit-bahay doon? LJ and Nina. Can you give me one solution for that? Sir, wala pong idea. Okay. So let me help you on that, Nina. Andun pa rin tayo sa organization. Ang yung organize natin, okay, is mga locations, okay, mga lugar, mga establishments that promote unity in a community. So ano ba tong mga locations na to? Bigyan kita ng sample, Nina. Parks. Ano pa? Um, stadiums. Yan. What else? Saan tayo pwede magkita-kita, no? Sa mga magkakapitbahay, 'di ba? Mga malls. Yeah. So magtatayo tayo ng mga locations where the citizens can can meet each other such as parks, stadiums, malls, and the likes. So, 'yun yung aking brainstorm here. So gusto ko, guys, I want you to see how it will turn out as an essay. So again, This is my introduction. Let me read this to you. While urban societies have allowed people to enjoy a more convenient and comfortable way of life, they have also caused many individuals today to isolate themselves from their neighbors. A number of reasons can be attributed to this tendency among city dwellers. Pero hindi sinabi ano yung mga reasons, okay? Nevertheless, this situation can be addressed effectively if certain proactive steps are taken by the government and the urban population. So, ito yung black part. Okay, let me draw some lines here. So you have the black part right here. No, it's white. So you have the black part right here. And then this is the red one. The, a number of reasons can be attributed to this tendency among city dwellers. And we also have the blue one, which represent the measures or the solutions that we can do. Nevertheless, this situation can be addressed effectively if certain proactive steps are taken by the government and the urban population. So you see how I layered the ideas here. Um, this one. And then you acknowledge the topic. This is where you included the reasons. And this is the solutions. But the measures that you mentioned, hindi mo muna siya i-discuss what they are because later on, ilalagay mo siya sa body. So you're not spoiling anything. So let's talk about the first uh, paragraph. In my opinion, people who have chosen to live okay, in cities tend not to know their neighbors because the lifestyle in metropolitan communities is often frantic-paced and isolating. People tend to take comfort from their immediate families or flatmates rather than the more traditional neighborhood networks one might find in rural areas. So hindi na daw sila nakikipag-mingle uh, sa kanilang mga neighbors because again, eto nga, the communities are frantic-paced and isolating. Okay, and they tend to take comfort from their immediate families or flatmates kaysa sa mga neighbors. Moreover, as cities become more crowded, ito na yung isang idea natin, people are forced to live in high-rise apartments where it is more difficult to meet and associate with neighbors. Mahirap nga naman because you live in condominium units, it's difficult to associate yourself with neighbors. The normal opportunities to mingle in common areas or be introduced to others through family networks, and again, mas common kaysa sa mga rural areas dito sa atin, oh, ito nga pala, kapitbahay ko, oh, ito nga pala, friend ko, di ba? Are denied most in these cases. To make matters worse, individuals often find it difficult to trust strangers in the masses of unknown people. Again, ito nga yung trust because hindi natin alam yung agenda eh, ng ating mga neighbors, di ba? Because cities can promote selfish attitudes and odd agendas. Today, the old adagi 
not to trust strangers appears to even, uh, even more valid in the midst of unfamiliar people. So that will be our causes paragraphs. However, ito na nga, this lack of sense of community may be addressed, ito na nga yung first solution, by personal effort and by the creation of spaces and areas that encourage the development of community interaction and relationship building. Individuals can make an effort to engage with their neighbors by means of open communication and the associations which run high-rise condominiums can host certain events appropriate to the different age groups of the residents. Again, age-appropriate events. In addition, to individual and concerted efforts to encourage a sense of belonging to a community, local governments which benefit from taxes, kasi syempre, tayo mga property taxes sa binabayaran, levied on housing units, should build and operate leisure parks nga, and recreational centers while promoting their use by the local population. Interactions at these public places promote a feeling of inclusion and belongingness, thereby promoting community spirit and establishing bonds and relationships among individuals. Now, let's proceed to the most important part, the conclusion. In conclusion, the isolation often experienced in cities can be dealt with. All that is required is reframing of the idea of community and goodwill in doing this. Sabihin, kaya, no? To make urban districts better places to live in. All right. So ito na ngayon, yung people today move to new cities and new countries more than ever before. Okay, sabi nga natin dyan. All right. All right, here are the questions that you may uh, choose from. Pag kayo po ay nag-practice. This one as well. And this one. This one is what I'm going to upload sa group, sa ating Discord. Uh, another is yung migration ng urban at saka ng rural area. I-upload ko din yan ngayon. Alright. But again, marami po tayong questions sa ating orange book. So what I want you guys to do is to somehow find something na sa tingin mo may hihirapan ka because we might not know what will come out on the test. Ano? So bago tayo magtapos, we brainstorm po muna natin ito. So obesity of uh, children, percentage of obesity is increasing. So let's talk about the possible causes. Ito, madali lang to, no? Causes of obesity. So topic natin is obesity. So causes. Bago tayo magtapos, ha? Um, Jezreel, can you give me causes of obesity among children worldwide? I think, sir, the fast food, sir. It's food. Again, fast food. Fast food. So explain natin later why fast food. And then ano pa? Bigyan mo nga ako Christine Magadia. What what else is the cost of obesity? Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> si Mommy kasi mo sagot. Uh, ano po sir? Kasama na rin sir sa food eh. Um improper diet. That's it, improper diet. We will add this this one, okay, diet. So we will add fast food. What else? Oh, Christian J. Karyon. What else are the causes of obesity? Sedentary lifestyle, lalo na po ngayon. Sedentary lifestyle. Thank you so much. Because those children right now are much more interested in lying down, playing with their tablets, watching TV while eating fast food and, you know, sabi nga ni Christine din, uh, improper diet. High fat, high glucose content, high glycemic index food. And then partner mo pa, their lack of interest in playing outdoors. They just want to play with their Nintendo Switch or PS5 or cell phones. Roblox, ayan na, gusto ng mga bata, di ba? All right. So if those are the causes of obesity, let's talk about the solution. So can you give me one solution? Jonalyn Noveno. Sir, change in diet. Yes, that's so simple. Diba? Change in diet, how? So it should be the parents 
who should limit, who should give, provide a much healthier option for children. All right? So parents. Another solution. LJ and Nina, what other solutions do you think we can use to prevent obesity among children worldwide? Sir, I think uh, the parents should uh, provide uh, no, uh, some activities so that, yes. that parents, the parents. children will become physically fit. Tama. Lifestyle change. You know, parents will be the one that children will imitate their activities as well. So parents should be the one to provide. Parents should provide lifestyle change like through increase in activity, in daily activity. All right. So they should engage in exercise so that in the future they, they can become healthier. All right. That's, that's nice, guys. That's uh, very nice of everyone to put a lot of insights in our discussion today. So once again, I will be sharing to you, all right, the samples of the essays which I have run through very fast. I will be stopping the recording now. So for replay watchers, goodbye. But 